Good evening, free enterprise fans, and welcome to tonight's Lunar Racing Club. I am Alisal, and I am joined here by the original founder of the Lunar Racing Club back in our early club days. I am joined by Inven. How are you doing tonight? Hey, doing all right. Looking forward to seeing the current uh, edition of it. Uh, for what it's worth, I was terribly unoriginal. Uh, Penguinator made the Underground Racing Club, but it happened at like... 10 p.m. Pacific time, so anyone Central or Eastern or the legendary Dusty Griff up in Newfoundland time certainly couldn't play in that race. So we got this one going a little earlier in the evening so the East Coast racers could get some good practice in. And uh, tonight it looks like the objectives have elected to live up to the club name. That looks like one very required darkness crystal. Yeah, I mean, the altars are always there, but the fact that uh, the third one rolled a simple gimme, you know, one of the easiest fights in the game up on Hobbs, and then the fourth one is just, well, did you... Uh... The only way to do one and two without doing four would be uh, to be on a push to jump seed and use the pass door trick, and that's definitely not happening tonight. <laughs> no, I don't remember, uh, remember putting those flags in when I rolled the seed. We got Pyre and Poidrac, so uh, all the and and, Plumer and of course our restreamer Plumeria Knight. Uh, so all all the uh, all the P names on stream, Yumi and Ryu are definitely outnumbered. Uh, but yeah, thanks to the runners for volunteering to be restream, and thanks to uh, the team so we could put the race on. Absolutely, um, this has kind of just been. I I was not expecting the turnout I've been getting on uh, the Lunar Racing Club. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see a lot of these racers grow both in these live races and the weekly asyncs. Um, just new players, just learning new strategies and then old players coming back in and just taking some of these harder flags and having some fun with it. Yeah, yeah. Notably, of course, Sea Hero is on. We have a Rosa Start, the White Mage of Preference. A uh, little tricky to get her agility really comfortable for Zeromus, uh, but she tends to have enough HP and enough output with her healing that you can be fine even with a, a, a bad agility score. You know, no one wants to go in with your anchor at 25, but if there's one character who will probably get you through that, Rosa can help sustain you all the way through. Well, and starting with a Twin Harp, probably not immediately where our runners are going to go. Although, um, it's a key item on the Overworld. Could be our Darkness Crystal. Um, but a Yong here with this Rosa. Um, what do you think of a starting Yong? It's a little awkward here, I think, because again, knowing that we only need a Darkness Crystal to enter Go mode means that, uh, it, it, okay. Let's start at the beginning. Yong, heavily level dependent. Uh, his attack algorithm is mostly based on his level. Stats help a little bit, strength and agility gains. Uh, he will end up with a ton of HP, so he can definitely help you survive a wayward Zeromas fight. But in a situation where we may be quickly and suddenly hitting go mode, uh, how much are you willing to grind? You may prefer just to have other hard-hitting characters who get it through equipment rather than through levels. And Poidrak not finding a whole lot there in Mist Cave did find a Rune Axe. That Rune Axe is fantastic if we can find someone to swing it and we come across some mages. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say probably most useful in a Maga Sisters fight. Uh, Asura notably vulnerable to it but at this point in the in the development of gameplay of free enterprise asura is usually not too much of a threat she gives you all the setup time you need with your team uh if you want to do blink 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 uh she's just gonna hang out and let you do it uh so maga sisters at some of these lunar altar spots especially that masamune altar could be super mean and having that around in that event will be very nice and two nice pickups, one on either side. Uh, Poidrak finding an Elven Bow and Pyre finding a Silent Staff. I love the Silent Staff. I think it's the best staff. Um, finding two Silent Staffs. Um, they, of course, hit Mage Weaknesses. They are very strong for white magic and um, they can silence things, uh, notably the guards. I've totally never accidentally used that strategy. 
<laughs> oh yeah, guards another one of those fights that once they start, uh, once you get them in higher level locations, if you don't have, you know, an hourglass or or insta death, all of a sudden you really do want to neutralize their counter spells, and that's a good way to do it. But both our runners are taking kind of two different routes. Uh, Pyre has started shopping percent, found some whistles and some cure twos. Uh, notably for the Lunar Racing Club, we have no starter kits turned on, which means you are going to have to buy all these cure twos, your tents, your life potions, your more expensive life potions, notably. Oh yeah, this is running on the beta then. Yes, those life potions are a thousand gold apiece. Um, the runners agreed to it. I still hate the change, but <laughs> I also like to buy 40 life potions. And we do see Evil Wall and a Dark Knight Cecil up on Hobbs, so very much expect our runners to end up going to Ord Deals the Seed to convert him to Paladin Hood. Uh, honestly, you know, a well-equipped Cecil and a Rosa can beat most seeds, just the two of them, with enough uh, patience, looting, and effort. Uh, so uh, the squad is really coming together. Very happy to see a Cecil there instead of, you know, some of the weaker party members we could get. Not that he's strong yet, but, you know, uh, Holy Swords have a lot of upswing once you find them and get him shaped up. Yep, uh, Cecil Rosa, I think, is the best thing you can ever find on one of these seeds. Uh, you have a dedicated healer, you have a dedicated melee um, that can do lots of damage. I wonder if our runners will go back to Evelyn, even though the percentages are a little bit different than uh, the main branch uh, stills somewhat of a good chance of finding something. And if we do have a rougher under, like, let's assume Darkness Crystal's not in the overworld, and, you know, we find a hook route, you may want to get some bonus XP on the way underground anyway. Uh, a lot of fights at that uh, King, Queen, Evelyn, and Rubicante spot. Normally, uh, agility manipulation is a huge factor in rendering the nastier bosses at those spots you know, manageable. Sea uh, Hero, I mean, yeah, if we uh, find a Cursed Ring, Rosa will still get everyone else sped up, but then your White Mage is extremely slow. Uh, so you would probably want the bonus XP in gear if we are looking like a, a nasty hook routes on the table. But then we still won't know that for another however many minutes. And Poidrat getting through that fight first doesn't get any XP on that Yawn, but... Uh gets the Cecil, I think, which is the bigger prize, and the first of our objectives, rescue the hostage on Mount Hobbs. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit why you did not choose tough quests when originally making this flag set? Uh, well, because there was no such thing as tough quests. <laughs> uh, tough quests were added a bit later uh, in free enterprise development. So uh, if I remember correctly, again, it's been years now, that the Underground Racing Club, I think, required both Fey March fights, not positive. And so this one requiring the two at the end of the moon was kind of the, uh, the fun little analog to that. Uh, also great because we, uh, at the time at least, loved to encourage swag walks uh, to the Zoromas fight. And having your penultimate fight already be past the final save point tended to encourage that a bit. That makes sense. Uh, unfortunately, Pyre taking a little bit of a nasty wipe, whereas Poidrak is sleeping in Silvera. Uh, in, yeah, Silvera. I don't think I've ever seen this. And also did not check the bushes. The bushes in Silvera always have good things. <laughs> yeah, so Pyre bouncing off Evil Wall finds a Poison Claw. You know, if we're going to keep the Yang around, you're pretty happy to find that. Uh, Again, stats not the hugest deal for him, but sometimes just having a non-elemental attack can be helpful. Uh, ask me about 10-minute-long uh, Pale Dim fights. You don't want to hear the slow sound effect 700 times? While doing half damage? Uh, not particularly. Poidrek did pick up a Black Sword from Silvera that is Cecil's best um, Dark Knight weapon. And one thing that is not turned... Oh, that's a Bacchus wine. Um, one thing that is not turned on in this flag set is C. Necky. That's something that we've seen a lot of. So your characters are starting with their vanilla gear, uh, for better or for worse. Yeah, and although, you know, some characters are 
perfectly content to be that way, you know, Edge and Fu. And honestly, I don't hate it on Yang even, because you know you're not starting with a stinky charm claw. Uh, but Dark Knight Cecil loves the, the Black Sword upgrade. Uh, massive stat boost this early in the game. Uh, and of course, if you time it right, you can proc swoon effects on enemies vulnerable to it. Uh, Ruby, not one of them, but still. Oh, those, those were two pickups for Pyre. Um, they're in the first part of Watery Pass, a coffin and a heroin rope. Uh, yes, please, that that Rosa is angry. Love the heroin rope. It's a little trickier on Sea Hero when Rosa's your hero, because it means she'll basically be doing it all, very few other turns being taken by your team. Uh, but if you have a good bow, that's fine. She can do it all. She's got a silent staff. Bonk. Poitra collecting to walk the crystal armor out here. Didn't get a lot of XP, but the crystal armor, uh, again, help me with the beta changes. It still sells for a ton of cash, right? It's not one that got reduced quite yes. so much as the other heavy armors. It was the only one that did not get reduced because of the it being the uh, money armor. Uh, Mizzy decided to keep it at its original price to get lots of money. Yeah. The... Uh... And you probably will want to that with it, of course. Uh, the the way it makes you resist Berserk means the only way to get past that is to equip an Avenger. And Cecil's usually a character that you want to be doing big damage in the end game. And depending on what is guarding, say, the Fey March, uh, an early crystal armor can be great for cover strats, uh, especially if you have a physical uh, boss there kind of defending terrible things. Cecil <laughs> will just be like, mm, no, not today. Ooh, that's a curse ring. That's a wonderful pickup for Pyre. Uh, again, it, it, trickier in the long term on a sea hero seed with Rosa because uh, she's such a good healer and a valuable part of the party. Uh, but early game, if we do have a nasty hook route, that could be uh, the item that makes the, the, the bleh, that makes the big difference. Well, and remind me, S Pro means you are not finding those for sale. Is that correct? Uh, right. You, if if we get a Baron key, the Baron armor shop could have them. On a hook route, the Eblin armor shop could have them. Uh, but unless the tiers have changed with the beta, you are not buying a cursed ring in an ungated shop. Well, and it's a 25,000 gold purchase or 30,000 gold. I don't know. What did we change it to? It's um, up to 66,000. We changed it. Oh, holy moly. I mean, it's it's massive. It, it changes the game so much. I mean, that's another thing, too, with some of the beta branches where people have made their own versions, including starting item Cursed Ring. I think it's a great starter kit to have as an option since in a head-to-head -head race, you know, it, it's fun to high roll loot but because of how powerful agility manipulation is, it can completely swing a race in an uninteresting fashion. So uh, I, I think it's cool that some of the, the, the programmers in the community are like, you know, let's make it to where everybody can have one. Definitely agreed. I, I am so out of touch with uh, any of the price changes except for exactly the life potions. I, I, I'm yeah. still stuck on that one. I pulled up the change log just so I'd know. You know, the nice thing about the live potion change, though, is that if you are playing a flag set with a whole bunch of starter kits, all of a sudden you can convert your starting live potions to all important cash money uh, if you're willing to live dangerously. And finding a Baron key there from Fabul Defense uh, opens up one of those gated shops that we just talked about. Um, and just another two checks. I think it was a rubricant spot that Sprite that gave us our starting item, wasn't it? So we know that's elements then. So yeah, elements really not that bad in that spot, but there is always the chance of something really nasty in the throne. Yeah, that that's the trick. You know, I, I've seen many races uh, in the community where Folks will be like, let me finish off the overworld before taking that hook route just to run into Valvalis on the Baron throne. 
and that is a reset that is very hard to come back from. Uh, Rosa with the aim command can do some work there, but if you don't have enough curatives and heal potions to make up for the weeks and the uh, and the petrifications, uh, yeah, bouncing off a nasty fight there is such a time loss. You probably just hit the forfeit button and go play something else. Hit the bricks, basically. <laughs> but Poidrak doing a little bit more shopping. Um, seems to be looking for something in these armor shops. Yeah, or can just be checking them while running through town. I think one big thing here is that as much as we want that DKC to become a paladin, running up ordeals without star veils is extremely risky. You know, next thing you know, you go up there and you run into... Actually, which burn do you have on, on the slag set currently? Oh, it's normal wyvern. So... <laughs> So you run into Wyvern, you run into Golbez, you know, at the back attack spot, and you don't have, uh, if you don't have Star Veils, you'll be living a life of regret. And again, no starter kits. You are not starting with those starter, uh, those starter, starter, st 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 starter Star Veils that most folks have gotten used to. Um, this really trains you that, yes, you have to look for things. Oof, that is a really bad gated shop. How about the armor? Eh, bandana. Oh, yeah, Bandana's got a big old price bump, didn't they? 12,000 now. Oof. Makes sense with how good they are adding that strength, but yeah, it's, it's a little painful. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying they're bad gear. I'm just saying, you know, it still has sticker shock, you know? It's it's like, what what happened to, to my dollar menu? <laughs> In time, it'll be just like the Cursed Ring and we'll be used to it. Remember yeah. when those were really cheap? I mean, I remember when Sirens were 100 gold apiece, so yeah. <laughs> and I don't think we've seen who's here. That's Iridia. Um, I mean, it's a mage, it's a sweeper if you can find a good summon. And Iridia has been empowered in the beta. Uh, Bahamut on the... Oh, hi, Wyvern. Uh, Bahamut on the list of options at Dwarf Castle. And a few other things, right? Uh, yeah, Bahamut's uh, tier was lowered, so you're more likely to find it. Uh, but that was definitely a very angry Wyvern. And Poidrak doing a little bit more shopping while Pyre is taking on this Mount Ordeals without Star Veils. I guess we, I, at this point, I wonder, I, they must be Agart or Kaipo, because I think we've seen every other item shop at this point, since Poidrag checks Silvera, and, uh, well, we've been everywhere else, so they're definitely hiding this time. Yeah, I think the Kaipo is always the most painful one, just because you have to walk all the way in, and if you do a package check and you haven't checked it, then it's just real bad. Oh, yeah. Okay, not so at the first spot on Mount Ordeals, this spot has very low physical attack power, so the punches aren't the threat, uh, and with 3,000 HP, the worst that a wave will do if you don't do any damage is uh, not really anything to write home about. So first fight here on the mountain. I guess the bigger concern would have been uh, getting Softlock versus Heal. But Rosa with that, I'm guessing that's a heroine robe. Silent Staff Bonk finishes the turtle off. Pyre is going to go ahead and safety save. Definitely makes sense. Every minute counts when you're racing against uh, just different racers of this caliber. Um, you don't want to lose by two minutes because you have to do an easy fight twice. Yeah. And we have a vanilla Mylon Z here, uh, which Pyre did have that staff equip. But, uh, so, okay, Dark Knight Cecil won't do a lot here. Yang with a Fire Claw will do double damage. That's really nice. Uh, and uh, I think Poidrak will gain a little bit of time here because Poidrak's Rosa uh, has that Elven Bow at her disposal, and we'll get to do... Uh, Double damage since my Z is technically flying to make it immune to quake spells. It's got a shadow there. You can, everything that has a shadow, it flies. That's true. That's true. Except Just like real life. Ah. 
Yeah, we see that Fire Claw getting moved over. Poor Yang, even hitting a weakness, has such difficulty at low levels. Uh, yeah, it was doing better with the HP-based items um, picked up. Uh, but even Cecil kind of contributing with those Cure 2s, and Pyre is through. Oh, yeah. Uh, neither of these fights. Massive challenge for our runners with their equipment and their parties. Uh, you may wish they were going a little faster. Everyone loves to hit a Mylon Z with a big Holy Sword, but, you know, at least you're pretty confident you're getting your Paladin soon. And Rosa being our hero, one really nice thing is Rosa is not going to struggle. Um, not like, say, a Tella or an Edward. Uh, Rosa's going to hit things real hard, especially on Pyre's side with that heroine robe. Absolutely. Key item dropping down from the sky. Do you think that's falling down from above or coming out of the mirror? I've always thought it was coming out of the mirror. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Definitely not going to struggle. <laughs> ah, help, help. <laughs> well, you would have probably rather have seen them at one of your lunar altars, but yeah. Earth Crystal, uh, Treasury, this is an, e well, pardon me, a T Pro Seed, so we probably won't see the goods that, uh, I mean, we're gonna loot it, and we're gonna keep our fingers crossed for some goodies. But you, you don't, you don't, don't get your hopes too high. I mean, a Bahamut summon, um, heck, even some nicer arrows than ice. Yeah, so at this point, our runner's options are that Baron Inn with a very speedy Wyvern at the start. Pyre shouldn't have a problem with that, I think, courtesy of the Heroine Robe. Should just be outspeeding it directly. Uh, Zot can also, with the magic power at the Val spot, be shockingly nasty. Uh, and of course, Baron Castle, we know the first fight's fine, but again, the, the spell power, uh, not the spell power, the defense of a Val at the second spot there can be nasty. So pick your, well, <laughs> I shouldn't say pick your poison. That's a different uh, club tournament thing. But, you know, three options here, all of which could have some pitfalls. You see, I really like the idea of music to Earth Crystal to Baron because it just flows so nicely. I forgot about the harp. I completely forgot about the harp. Uh, I do like still doing the treasury first. This Cecil needs gear. Like, I don't think, I mean, did Pyre get the... No, Poydrak got the Rune Axe. So Pyre, I think, is still looking for something to put on the pally. Uh, could pull a lightsaber out of here. Lightsaber ain't nothing to sneeze at. Let's see. Oh, you called it! Bahamut Summon right out the gate. <laughs> and a Tiara. And a Charm Rod. Uh, That's the uh, starter Rydia uh, with, a, with an angry Bahamut. Yeah, like starter kit. <laughs> this is very much go go beat that go get that Rydia. And you know, that's a rare thing for me to say, but holy moly, that is a Rydia oriented treasury. And another crystal armor, um, just for more money. Yeah. The one thing that would normally keep me from going to Twin Harp just yet would be wanting to get an exit spell first. Uh, but I think both are, well, one, they're for sale in Troya, the exit door item. And two, I think both our runners picked up quite a few just out in the wild. Well, yeah, I see one in Pyre's inventory there. I think he actually bought another stack um, because I remember him having like 15. <laughs> I don't want to do Zot, the purchase. <laughs> and here we go. We are going to, Pyre is taking the very uh, logical route around the world. Uh, but the Cecil is level one. Yang is Yang. Uh, kind of still leaning into Rosa for the hard carry through Magnus here. Yeah, it's not going to be the easiest fight, depending on what it is. But if it works out, it just, the routing is so pretty. And um, it's it's so much better than going the opposite direction of Baron Key into Earth Crystal into... Uh, um, harp. Because that one just hurts. Yeah. 
play drag clearing up King Queen Evelyn as well. The seed is being very, very coy about what the next big opening is going to be. Are we going to pull the magma key? Are we going to have a hook route? Is it just going to be darkness direct to moon? Because uh, you do have K unsafe on here, which means there could be no underground this seed. We could just get the darkness crystal and, and that's it. And uh, one real quick pickup that Pyre got in uh, Cave Magnus was a silk web. That, that can be big. Silk webs are great. Love them. Oh yeah, especially on Sea Hero Seeds, where all of a sudden slowing down Zeromas becomes even more vital. Uh, Antidel's even been doing, uh, making spreadsheets and doing analysis on situations in Sea Hero where you even want to use either the Haste Fast Spell or Hermes Shoes to eke out additional turns during the Zeromas fight. So, uh, Sea Hero makes a strange bedfellows. Speaking of strange bedfellows, there's a strange fellow crawling out of his bed. I believe he has a song to play for us. Oh, good. I want to listen. seems important. Uh, this also seems kind of miserable. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, a little bit. Kind of ironically, uh, still having uh, DKC might have been kind of nice here. Uh, well, at least Poitrax with the, uh, with the Black Sword. Uh, so D-Mist takes three swings, turns into Mist. If you hit it while it's Mist, uh, you get... Uh, well, if you use a Fight command while it's Mist, whether manual or Zerked, you get a Cold Mist counter. The Power Punch from Yang there doesn't activate it, of course. Uh, so this may take a hot minute, but this is a double check. Uh, uh, no free lunch means that D-Mist... Uh, Defeating Demis leaves an item, well, bleh, spawns an item at Rydia's mom in the Village of Mist. I just had a thought um, that just occurred to me. Um, because free enterprise is an economics term and no free lunch is an economics term. And I don't know if that was on purpose, but if it is, I, I, I'm here for it. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Because are they even, they're not called, okay. Hold on, I have to go look at the, the, the generator now, because it's not called that anymore. For a long time, the actual generator page had a section called No Free Lunch that had no free key item, no free bosses, no free, I forget the third thing. Uh, but eventually it just made more sense to fold all those into their other categories. And that's why you have Be No Free, K No Free, like that. Uh, but it was its own category called No Free Lunch, which I, I would wager was an ec another economics joke. I think that's hilarious. And oh, Pink Tail, uh, no adamant armors in play, but still, uh, if you're looking for a place to get a Holy Sword, uh, the Mini Miner is not the worst place, if we do find a hook, of course. Yeah, I think our runners would really like to find their way underground. Uh, Poidrak giving that uh, that uh, Wyvern another shot. Unfortunately, Sushil just not putting out the damage. So looks like heading back to Eblin. Might want to try out these trap chests. See if can't get an Avenger, a Crystal Sword, um, a lightsaber. Yeah, I like the idea of trying to find something here to get the Cecil online beyond just the Runax. Uh, notably, that anti-mage damage will work very nicely against the Mad Ogre's chest if we find it. Uh, not 
this one though. Uh, Firebomb from earlier would be good here, but I think we consumed all those on ordeals. Yeah, this is one of those fights where a Charm Claw would actually come in handy on that Staleman. Yep, yep. Boreas does some work, but it, it has, I think, a 2,000-ish HP. So definitely could use a little more oomph here. Yang's kick was not oomph. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I understand this play. You are, of course, worried that if you go all the way to Magnus and you run into someone nasty, you're just going to have wasted your time. If you go up Zot and bounce off of it. Uh, but, you know, Pyre being a little more courageous and just YOLOing it, uh, getting rewarded. Although did not go see the Demist item, I believe, electing to, uh, again, focus on just the tight routing rather than immediately picking up the freebie. It's so smooth. It's like getting the tower, going up the tower as soon as you get underground from uh, the Falcon. It's it. I love it. Now I believe we saw Poydrak grab that Thunderclaw out of uh, Antlion Cave. D is this Yang also doing a little zippy zap? I'm uncertain. Yeah, it's Yang. You, you really can't tell. <laughs> You can tell it versus Odin, and that's about it. When you hit Odin's Thunder Weakness, even with a baby Yong, you know it. Because you're like, oh, I didn't know you could do four digits. <laughs> but Poydrak looks like looking for that Mad Ogre chest. Um, kind of had a little problem with the Staleman uh, skeleton chest. Understandable. There's a lot of enemies. They hit fast. And we don't have a sweeper, but uh, here's Mad Ogre's. Yeah. And Poydrek did pull a Rune Ring out of a chest as well, uh, which I'm not sure if he threw that on. Uh, both Yang and Rosa can equip it, and it gives mage defense, so that would also be helpful for this fight. But Cecil and Rosa both hitting for, eh, we'll call it a thousand. I'll call 900 a thousand. Who's counting? Uh, so should be able to get through this fight and get some good XP and hopefully a good drop. That, that was less than a thousand. That was, uh, Cecil, you're going to have to do a little better than that. He's level one. <laughs> He's trying. <laughs> well, he needs to try harder. Mm, maybe that thousand was the fluke. Higher but, cleanly. Oh, God. No, you go ahead. Okay. Hey, it's Fuso. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Uh, yeah, Fu. Fu's great. Uh, that's a white spear for the uh, young we don't have. <laughs> or the I cane. Mean, <laughs> yeah, it'll sell for a decent amount. Uh, so there's only seven total characters. We now know five of them. We now know six of them. So uh, the chance of finding Kane at this point is, seems to be a bit of a long shot. Um, and at this point, uh, yeah, this is a lot better than, um, yeah, this is, this is like best case scenario party. Yeah, getting the foo is really nice. It, uh, first of all, if you do need to do a major grind to get ready for Zeromas, he enables it. He will have the weak spell. You can do your D machine fight if you so choose. Uh, he can help facilitate a Mac Giant fight with Cecil if for some reason you just hate the machines. Uh, he can help you do all the trap chests on the moon you care to. Uh, less with the, the, the double dragon ones, but all the others, he's great for. He's going to help you out. Uh, so a did great you see, pickup. Did you see that uh, that spell list that Vu already has? <laughs> well, I, oh, did oh did he just queue media? I know we have nuke, but you're not going to cast nuke on the on the CPU. But is that a medio getting queued up? Oh, yeah, medio cure four. Yeah, so this foo rolled uh, real well. Yeah, he is about to run away with the remainder of the blue planet. Poydrak really needs to pull a big. Big Cecil stick to, uh, to to bring this back. And hey, you remember that whole talk about life potions? Ow. <laughs> 
Rosa gets XP anyway, but that definitely uh, is a little scary. Uh, you could use those to kill that wyvern. That's true. That's true. Artemis arrows, uh, giving the one massive attack increase, two quadruple damage versus dragons, also could be very useful depending on who we have to get through for the rest of the seed. Definitely. If we get a pale dim and say the ribbon room, Artemis arrows just cut off so much time on that. And just a bottle of wine for Pyre, I don't think you're that torn up over that being your Zot reward when you get a Teifu for your troubles. And Pyre not forgetting about uh, the check here, even though having done two checks. And let's see if that harp was actually anything. Yeah, still no way underground or to the moon yet. <laughs> womp womp. Uh, so, okay, now Pyre might be feeling a little rough because that means that your two checks from Cave Magnus, like, yes, Pink Tail is a key item. It does give high tier loot, but it, it's done nothing for you so far. Zot gave your a much improved party, but there can just be a foo in Baron Castle for all we know. So maybe Pyre's good feelings are, are tamping down just a little bit with those subpar rewards. And it looks like just going to sell everything that's not nailed down. Um, I think maybe is thinking this is probably my party. I'll h hold on to that Murasame for a little bit longer, but. Uh, I, I bet Pyre. Well, OK, it's tricky, right? Because the nice thing about this Porum is that she could end up wearing that heroine robe if Rosa's agility is already appropriate for Zeromas. All of a sudden, having a super speedy white mage could come in handy. But Fu's going to have more HP and kind of the same capability anyway. Uh, so I, I don't think this Porum ends up sticking around. Well, and especially since Rosa already knows Exit. Um, but Poydrak finding a pan, it would be nice to go underground to be able to use it. <laughs> So, uh, okay. We now know that someone in Baron Castle is gaining progress. Someone. Well, what could be there that could give our runners pain? I I don't think anything. Because it's you don't have B unsafe on the slag set. B unsafe would mean there could be the Val on the throne. Uh, so... I, I, that means that it can't even be like Golbez at this point. So can't be Golbez, can't be Val. I, I think that with the teams we're seeing here, we're going to be okay. And Poydrak taking this Rydia, uh, giving her all the nice things. Um, doesn't, oh, there's the wizard shirt. Uh, and hopefully can... Oh, yeah. Poydrak got a sword. Uh, inventory well, management is a thing that sucks. Oh, there should also be a charm rod there, which is a little better than the Lilith rod. But with a full inventory, it's very easy to miss those little upgrades that you have kicking around. Flurry over here, hoping for Odin spot and a darkness crystal. Um, it could happen. <laughs> Referencing, of course, the uh, Final Fantasy IV pixel remaster randomizer, uh, Falcon Dive, where, yeah, uh, it, K on safe is on in perpetuity in that one. And Poydrak finding the shop that sells all the things. Those are Star Veils. Those are life potions. Um, I didn't see how many life potions Poydrak bought, but hopefully it was more than seven. That's 20. 20 will be okay, I guess. Definitely better than walking to Kaipo, I guess. But not by much.
and yeah, we see that Fu gonna let Pyre run away with this early game. Uh, Poydrek going back to Eblin. Is this the third visit of the seed? Oof. I can't remember. I think Poydrek did. Uh, this might be his second visit. Um, he All did right, Pyre. The... Pyre did the early. Yeah, my bad. But still um, looking for that big swing and stick. And those are some variety of guards. Yeah, let's see which ones we are dealing with. Hey, you know that silent staff? You're really lo oh, never mind. I don't think we get to see a good silent staff bonk here. My heart I, is broken. I am so disappointed. I love to hit the guards with the silent staff. And this little baby Rydia, great sprite. I love it. Yeah, I believe this is the uh, Mother 3 palette. Oh, what's the princess's name? The tomboy princess and Mother 3. Uh, I can't remember. You're not getting anything from me. I've never played any of the Mother series. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Weird. But uh, that was an Edward. Well, we know our seven characters. And uh, I think that Pyre has the correct five character team for this scene. Uh, yeah, that, that, no. Edward, just no. Oh, and yeah, Kumatora is that palette. Thank you, Twitch chat. PK, were you trying to say Birdo instead of Bardo? Oh, what was the item in the pot? I, I was thinking about PK. I was also thinking about PK. Oh, it was the hook. Okay. So we do have one, a means of turning in that pink tail. Two, a uh, route underground. And uh, three, only one hanging check in the overworld, which Pyre's going to take a quick peek because there's a lot of nasty things here that this foo can just uh, carry you through, even with this relatively low level team. Ew. No, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I wouldn't either, because, you know, you can th you can think that even if that is the Darkness Crystal, maybe between the pan and the other stuff that you have easier fights, you're going to get to 10 key items and then get bonus XP to prepare for Zeromas. Like, I, if that has the Darkness Crystal, I don't even want it right now. Get that. <laughs> and Poydrag just got super bullied by the Staleman. Um... Why does hitting something not wake you up? That it works in every other Final Fantasy game. Why doesn't it work here? You know, that is weird that they didn't quite have that status element worked out properly in this one. I, I didn't even know that until about a year ago. So every race where my character would get sleeped, I would try to hit them with another character. Look, game's hard, y'all. Yeah, and Poydrek is trying real hard here to make sure Rydia survives, because this fight should grant her enough MP to start throwing that Bahamut spell around. And uh, if you're not using that, wh why, why is she even here? <laughs> yeah, Bahamut takes care of uh, most problems. But this stale man, uh, gosh, this is the fight you want to have Bahamut on, and this is the fight you need to get through to get Bahamut. Yeah, this one it's more like maybe. Oh, yeah, that's got that's got to be a reset. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, so we were so happy to learn how to proc status on hit status elements as a community. The problem is that the computer is also very happy to proc on hit status elements to your team. And it stinks. Well, that's just rude. I mean, it's cash money. We're about to be at another gated shop. Uh, so, yeah. Pyre has oh. 1.8 million gold right now. That sounds right. Because also was able to sell those ninja blades after seeing Edward, huh? And we've gotten three crystal armors. Oh. <laughs> Well, then you're right. Uh, 
Dragoon Lance, I mean, it's my favorite cane weapon, but Peshaw, not on this scene. And really nothing interesting going to be in these item shops either. Um, woo, Cure Threes. I like the purchase there, given the uh, the Yang on the squad and the fact that Zeromas can be dubious. Not even looking at the weapon armor shop, though. That's kind of cool. It's kind of swaggy. Well, and do we even have a weapon for that Cecil yet? I think maybe Pyre has a nice brand. I know Poitrak has one. But isn't even interested in any of these trap chests down here, or uh, monster chests down here. Uh, going ahead and just heading straight down to find uh, another foo. <laughs> Well, that's good news, at least uh, for Poitrak, because if Poitrak elects to forego Zot completely, uh, we'll still be getting the team together. Yeah, uh, dupes are not on on this slab flag set, so yeah, you're not going to have three Fusoyas, four Cecils, um, and you can get some very interesting parties for the overworld. And sometimes the overworld and the moon, um, where you're trying to kill something with a level 5 Rydia. Hey, here are those Rydia levels, though. 12 of them. That, that may be enough to cast Bahamut two times. But I'm a little more interested right now in what this treasure is going to be. Well, that's rude. <laughs> All the cane spears. He took the day off and he left all his garbage lying around. But Pyre heading straight down probably feels a little bit behind, especially now with that Zot and finding that Foo. Um, so, but looks like Poidrak finally heading up to do that Twin Harp. Uh, has the Earth Crystal as well. Okay, it is going to do this. So, the, uh, the, the, the Pyre may feel behind, but this in fact places him squarely ahead if Poitrat's going to be uh, going through both Magnus and Zot. Uh, we do find those Magma sisters, and Fu don't care. <laughs> yeah, they have. Um, they're a little bit. No, they're not. Never mind. The spell power at this spot is weak. It's the King Queen up one spot, uh, but they do be punchy. But the punchiest one is the middle sister. So she's already back road and thus not getting to do uh, full damage. And I, if you have a rune ring on, you'll get defense from their melee attacks as well. So uh, yeah, very easy Maga sister spot really. And dolls in the second spot looks like uh... Uh, Mindy left her toys just all strewn around, and yeah, now we have to clean up her mess. Yep. And it's gone. Yep. Very easy hook route uh, for this team. Nothing too bad here. Uh, but now, of course, you have, you know, the kind of the panic zone of where's the darkness crystal? I need a darkness for go mode. That's all I need. Who's got it? I suspect we're going to see probably a bunch of very quick freebie checks. Yeah, between the pen and the Fey March, we're going to get a flurry of key item action going on here. But we're also going to get a Twin Harp Encore. Enjoy uh, your Ridley fight.
and looks like Rydia went through her rebellious teenager phase and throwing angry dragon god at her mother. No, you shut up, Mom. <laughs> I don't even want to live here anymore. Uh, and meanwhile, Pyre gets the adamant ore. Uh, I mean, hooray! Uh, unironically, wait, unironically hooray, because this is vanilla Kakal. So get yourself mm -hmm. a legend sword. Oh, it's not. What? A, where? Because it's hero. Oh, it's hero! It's hero! Dang. Yeah, uh, I thought the same thing. Imagine my disappointment when I got the uh, the mist whip when I had a Cecil. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, Rosa's weapons are also lackluster. I think if it gave both her bow and arrow instead of just one or the other, it would be a little more thrilling. Uh, but as it stands, it's a little like... <laughs> But we get, I don't think I saw, did we see this? Did I see this? Did he come back? Uh, that's a gold buzz, but this is officers. Yeah, this is actually really great. Uh, officers being here is basically free and gold buzz at the Asura spot is the one of these two spots you want him at because you get your star veils up and the gold buzz will basically take care of himself due to Asura's absurd spell power. So you have one job. With how bad the XP here is, I think I think maybe just quaking to try to kill the soldiers might have been a little better, but maybe we'll get it on the rebound. We do have a ton of Cure Threes here to keep this cover Cecil going. Hey, you got it on the rebound. There we go. And Poydrak going ahead and taking the Flame Dog. I think with the updates, you can no longer uh, spike a. Uh, Spike a tier eight, so this will not be an Excal or a Crystal Sword. Mm. We get a oh, Unveil can come in handy though. Uh, we do get a Tower Key from that Guards fight, which is wonderful. Uh, you don't have to worry about doing a double dip of Keyless Tower, which I didn't see who the boss was during the pit, uh, right after the Pitfall drop. Did anyone in chat see who's at the top of lower battle? I saw it and then promptly forgot what it was. Ah, Odin. Okay. Thunderclaw and the fact that that spot doesn't have high spell power for the Zantetsukin means uh, that's a very, very reasonable fight for this team. So we've got a lot of very speedy checks. Uh, Pyre will probably hit 10 key items in a hurry. Uh, and then it's just getting Zeromus ready. Didn't even have a real nasty Fey March fight. 15 Star Mills. I love it. <laughs> when you have that much money, it's like when you buy 99 Bacchus just because you can. Which I've totally done. 99 bottles of Bacchus to drink, 99 bottles of wine. Well, I mean, when you start with 99 Sylph Summons, uh, and then you find the Bacchus wine. Why not? Yeah, I've had 99 white shirts as part of that kit before, and that also financed the entire game. <laughs> yeah, we see that spell power doing work here. Pyre is probably just doing quick mental math, looking for this to total 23,000-ish, and we'll take a quick little punch, and the fight will be done. And Poydrak, unfortunately, following right in Pyre's footsteps, uh, heading up the Tower of Zot, gonna get an old man and a Bacchus here, but Pyre is through that Golbez. Yeah, so Fey March clear. Uh, very, just uh, very powerful team. I, again, this is a, har I, it is noteworthy that this is a harder flag set than many, but you get the tools, you put them to work, and uh, yeah, you get all these nice, clean, speedy fights. Pyre is really showcasing his uh, his skills and his knowledge of the game. And with that, Pyre is done with the Fey March, never has to see it again, and likely gonna head for that pan check. Yeah, so we'll get a K summon check from the Sylphs, two K main checks at Sheila. 
Uh, that's uh, and we are currently already sitting pretty at seven key items. Uh, Rat Tail becomes another freebie. Uh, and Darkness Crystal, of course, puts us in go mode. So those are two that are very appealing and I'm sure Pyre hopes to see incoming. Or you could find the Legend Sword and then you could go to the gated shop. That's true. Uh, could find Bacchus wine there, could find Sirens there. Sirens there would completely simplify the entire grind situation. Oh, hey, <laughs> you've done that twice now. Stop it. I, I can't help it. I thought you were a, a Disney princess, not a witch. You live long enough, you become the villain. <laughs> and they get better songs anyway. That's true. But Pyre, not interested in what Kokel's selling today. Knowing um, I'm just a darkness away from finishing up the seed. And with that foo and some of the levels he's gotten, uh, I don't even think the ribbon room and the masa altar will be very scary. Yeah, you know what is pretty scary? Just throwing down 75,000 points, channel points like it ain't no thing. Angry Sun out here showcasing uh, the love for free enterprise that this community is uh, so full of. Hey, shout out to Angry Sun. Yes, shout outs to you. That's, uh, we have channel points. There, there are channel points. I totally know how this channel works. <laughs> uh, what was the first Sheila item? I saw a second one was the Luca key. I sure didn't see the first one because I was too busy reading chat. Okay, our tracker didn't see the second one, and I didn't... Okay, oh, it was dark... Okay. <laughs> well, that would be go mode, then. Uh, and... That's also 10 key items. So, Pyre's out of here. <laughs> Ooh. What do you do for your grind? Well, I would have checked a coal shop, but I'm sure I would have found sirens, and I would have had a very nice, easy, sleepy time, eat three dozen eggs grind. Uh. Foo and Friends is miserable, and I don't suggest anyone do it. Foo and Friends is also a little trickier on Sea Hero when you are not 100%, you know, certain of what your turn order is going to be. Although, I guess you could just curse Rosa, and then it's a lot more manageable. Uh, which is what Pyre's kind of been doing already anyway to get Foo uh, first strike in all these fights. I guess I'm just not somebody who likes Foo and Friends because it's just like Eddie Strats and it's fun the first time you watch it and then it's like, well, now what do we talk about for 20 minutes? You know, I, 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 I will disagree. I enjoy seeing someone pull off Zeroma skills of such precision. I know that a lot of people just like, hey, can we just have Cecil swinging for seven to 8,000 at a time? Which is delightful. Enjoy that as well. But I think it's really cool when a runner does get to showcase just how much they've practiced, how well they understand the ATB system. Well, not ATB, the, the, the turn system of this game. And, you know, completely make Zeromus look like a scrub. Oh, yeah, it's totally impressive. Um, but after you've seen the fourth or fifth one, uh, you're like, OK, how many times can I say the same thing that I've said three days in a row? Uh. Well, that's when you just talk about other things, you know, like uh, shoes nice... and chips and ceiling wax and cabbages and kings. I like cabbages. I saw a duck taking a nap with its head on a cabbage the other day. It was really cute. Not in real life, but on the internet. My dog takes his little uh, toy squeaky bunny, little baby bunny, and he sleeps on it. It's precious. Nice. But what what if then, like, what if the your dog shifts in his sleep? Would he not then make the bunny squeak and wake himself up? This seems not to be the best way to take a good nap. Uh, that squeaker is long dead. It just kind of uh, makes a sad, fake squeaking noise. <laughs> it's just like me, for real, for real. <laughs> 
<laughs> the noises we all wake up when we get out of bed in the morning. Anyway, Poidrak here making clean work, uh, has a foo with 1700 HP, so you know he knows all the goodies. Rydia with the Bahamut spell. Uh, Cecil would still like a proper weapon at some point, but uh, all these fights between Poidrak and getting back to where Pyre, getting to the point where Pyre is, Poidrak's not going to have any trouble. Uh, I think that it will probably come down to what our runners choose for their grind and how well uh, they do manage that that build up to the Zeromus fight. Sea Hero is so great for that. It, sea Hero always means it's not over till it's over because someone could just go take a 10 minute Zeromus fight, lose it at the end, and then the other players right back in it. That's exactly what happened our last restream. Um, but Pyre heading into the Ribbon Room, f finding the D-Lunars. Um, yeah, D-Lunars about to have a real bad time. Going to get Meteored. Just yeah, like the dinosaurs of old. Yeah, uh, since the HP here is split between them as it is in Vanilla, uh, now I guess they're still going so fast. We are going to see uh, frogs here, I'm sure. That Yang holding the turn instead of doing a power punch. This is a, the media is gonna do great opening damage, but definitely gonna wait here and get Starvels up to turn them into Lunar Toads. Yeah, the, these these dinosaurs are fast. Yeah. And you know, I used to think they were rude enemy. I, I, to talk again about the other, uh, the differences between the SNES and the Pixel Remaster, uh, they changed the script for these jerks in the Pixel Remaster. I'm assuming it was a mistake and they didn't know what they were doing, because otherwise they're just mean, and I would rather they be uh, uh, foolish than mean. Uh, in that literally any attack other than summon magic causes them to start doing the reflect bio script. Uh, and of course, summon magic, they counter with remedy to heal themselves partially. So there is no there there is no good way of dealing with them in the Pixel Remaster. Whereas here, you know, you can jump, you can power punch, you can aim, you can cast spells that aren't summon magic. All these things are fine. They are all things that you do not have the privilege of using in the Pixel Remaster. Stinky, stinky Lunasaurs. I don't know what a Lunasaur is. I just play a uh, 35 year old game. These Lunars. <laughs> These Lunars, yeah. These Lunars. And getting a look at the weapon and armor shop here by Poidrak, uh, yeah, not really anything to write home about. But Poidrak is looking for that Staleman chest, still wants a weapon for that Cecil. Can't fault him for that. Meanwhile, Pyre getting big XP, thanks to already having 10 key items here. Those are some levels. Well, and depending on what we get here in the last spot, um, even a ribbon in the ribbon room. How nice. <laughs> that crystal ring would have been really good for that D-Lunar's fight. <laughs> or the Golbez fight. Yeah. Uh, plus five agility helps more than you may expect when you need to uh, manipulate a sea hero team and dragon defense. Very nice indeed. I enjoy that that Porum has five levels more than everybody else on the team. Yeah, that was a very well-timed slingshot to keep Porum uh, helpful for the duration of this scene. Well, and we've got a Silver Apple. She can get 50 more uh, HP. Hey, she's over 1,200 already. That's usually, you know, the, uh, you want the 1,200, the, the I can survive a nerfed Big Bang number. I've seen her take full Big Bangs that are less than 1,200. Well, maybe not quite, but close. Is that a delay? No, okay, it was a delay. The, uh... So if a fight has a weird, almost negligible delay before loading in, it is a multi-part fight. 
usually that means at this altar we're getting real excited, hoping that we're going to see an alt gauntlet. This time it's just the two-part Dr. Luge fight. Uh, a little disappointing, but, you know, they can't all be alt gauntlets at the uh, Masamune altar. We've already done it twice this season. Oh, nice. And yeah, uh, Plumeria Knight in the chat, uh, yeah. Porum gets cure for annoyingly late. So although she does, uh, yeah. When I say what more could you ask for past 1200 HP, yeah, you could ask her cure for. Absolutely. Although I guess Pyre does have that stack of cure threes, so maybe it's not even necessary. Well, and Porum's probably like, I'm ready for a nap. Definitely past her bedtime. It is almost past my bedtime. But Dr. Luge, not a threat here. Um, there are some bosses you can get here that you just really question every choice that brought you to here. Uh, Dr. Luge isn't one of them, but also not going to get a whole lot of XP from this. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the XP is split amongst all four forms, and it's impossible to kill all four forms. Uh, you only get to kill three of them. Womp womp. Uh, so... Will Pyre be comfortable enough with this team to go ahead and go for Zoromas? Are we going to see a, a trap chest or two on the moon? Maybe some behemoth fights, things of that nature. Oh, well, there's your rat tail. <sighs> no. <laughs> Not what we're looking for. Well, and one thing that we don't have is the pass. Yeah, so leaving the moon doesn't feel good. Fighting Zeromus with a team of level 40 characters doesn't feel that good. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I fully believe Pyre can win this fight, and apparently Pyre thinks so too. Uh, not even going to go safety save. Just turning that battle speed down, trusting in the huge stack of Ether 2s and Cure 3s and Fusoya. Yes, there's a stack of Fusoya. But this is gaming. Is this just a bunch of smaller Fusoyas stacked on top, all wearing beards? It's Fusoyas all the way down. Yeah, Pyre, a hugely aggressive play here. Uh, good, good luck. <laughs> um, yeah, this, uh, we are about to fight Zeromus. Um, I guess we should do the thing. Do we have to do the thing? Look, you're gonna you're gonna get excited when you see Zeromas. Live with it. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, I'll get excited if it's a new sprite. If it's you know one of the ones I've seen a thousand times, I'll be like, oh hey, look who it is. <laughs> I would like to see something new. It's been a hot minute. Everyone always wants to see a new butt now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I'm tired of all these old butts. I'm ending my YMCA membership. I'm going to Planet Fitness instead. <laughs> oh, Lord. This, this Cerebus is a little fast. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited to watch this fight. This is... Uh... This is very dubious. This is very gaming. Uh, and uh, yeah, good luck to Pyre. Let's see. Oh. <sighs> what on God's green earth? <sighs> that might be a butt. No, it's not a butt. It's a... Uh, <laughs> this is, I think, from... Isn't this the final boss of Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced 2? That uh, would have required me to play any of the Final Fantasy Tactics's. Yeah, Nukia, final boss of FFTA2, Grimoire of the Rift, appearing as a gigantic purple hand ripping through the rift. I... I got nothing. I'll post the link in chat. For what it's worth, I kind of wish that there was a, uh... Uh, so if you look at it, this part is specifically the little hand at the bottom 
on the sprite on that page, which I kind of wish we... <laughs> I kind of wish that Scala had gone with the full version, because the just the hand part makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> I am uncomfortable <laughs> with this form of the boss. But the full version looks pretty cool. Look how big it is. Well, and it goes around the whole screen, around the whole, like, two three-dimensional map. Yeah. This, the, the, this just... Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't give you existential dread. That is, okay. I like it. I like the new Zeromas question. Thank you to our restreamer of the Marionite. This is what I'll, I'll yep, yep, this one definitely does. I, and I feel bad because I've not been paying attention to how Pyre is managing this fight, so. Um, Rose is dead. That's, that's, that's about as far as I know. Well, I'm assuming there are star bells up on everyone. We have the nukes going off, so the counter nukes do damage as well. Nice 7,000 for Fu, you know. He can sometimes lower all nukes to, like, the tune of 5,000 in this fight. So, kind of nice to see that he's actually keeping with it. And Poydrak looks like just took out the guards and is going to go back for that uh, Golbez. Oh yeah, very clean here, using the crystal to make sure, like, having the other characters spam the crystal to make sure that, uh, one, we don't refill past the first 61,000 HP, uh, and two, to make sure any big bangs that come out are nerfed and can do a max of 1,200 damage. Yeah, this is going very smoothly. I wonder if... I wonder if this would have been possible without the Cursed Ring. Um, I think that it's definitely letting us get this, uh, this Z to a point where this fight has not gone completely off the rails and you are using every life potion you have. Yeah. So I'm assuming uh, Pyre is counting here just as he did in the Golbez fight that Poitrak's doing here, you know, counted the 23,000 damage, then take a bot to finish it. I'm assuming Pyre does not want to tip into phase two here and is thus being uh, cautious not to go past the 45,000 mark. Uh, once you do direct damage exceeding 45,000, you cause the refill. Uh, throwing the crystals won't cause it, reflecting spells won't cause, won't cause it, uh, and it will basically cut this fight in half and guarantee that you don't even have to deal with Meteo at the end. So I assume Pyre's keeping good count of this. And yeah, this looks very smooth, very steady. Uh, that cursed ring on Rosa. Like, it's actually kind of good that Pyre didn't level Rosa up that much more, because keeping her at this level with a cursed ring means that you are getting the rest of your team at RA1. Or RA2. Yeah, this is very heads up. Um, because, oh, although, uh, Chad... Go is, ahead. I don't think Rosa that level with a crystal ring is at 28. Is, Chad, is she cursed or is she, uh, or is she crystalled? We could probably look at what our health would be uh, and do math from there. Gotcha. But that would require require pulling up the spreadsheet, um, and I am not the spread spread y'all. <laughs> y'all, I have lost the ability to spit out words. I'm going to the wiki to Rosa underscore stats underscore raw. This Rosa has 1,591 HP. That puts her, yeah, at level 40. I think that's what we saw before we came in here. And that means her base agility is 20. So a crystal ring would only put her at 25 right now, but the cursed ring puts her at five. And that means that anyone with agility 13 or higher is RA1, and that should be everyone on this team. Does Young have more than 13? Oh, that's oh, I don't. I don't think it matters. <laughs> that ruled. Uh, and Pyre. That, that is Pyre in first place of all our runners with a time of 1 hour, 12 minutes, and 9 seconds. 
immediately followed by Roger McBain in second place with one minute or one hour, 12 minutes and 38 seconds. They knew him, they knew him through this scene. Well played. And looks like Poydrax is going to show us what's at the top of tower, but I think we are joined by Pyre. GG's. GG's, thank you. Hey, very well played. Love that Zeromus fight. Uh, the big thing I'm curious about is if you had not found a cursed ring, what would your backup plan have been? Um, I was thinking of a quick D machine since I had everything already, or I was planning on searching for it for Fu and friends anyway when I saw Fu. Um, if that didn't go too well, then I'd probably try to find Zesta at least something slightly better, and then just do the level circus my way through. Yeah, the game definitely gave you the uh, the ability to finance all the item purchases you needed for that. Uh, how many Star Veils, how many Ether 2s, how many Cure 3s? You were kind of uh, ready to roll with that strat. Yeah. I figured since I hadn't found any cabins or anything, all those extra Q3s and Ether 2s would help me just keep rolling without having to stop or heal for anything. Well, and did you feel at all nervous going down to that Zeromus after taking on that Dr. Luge fight? Uh, a little bit. After a long day at work, sometimes I'd stop paying attention to the numbers and seeing how much I have and then risk tipping, but... Uh, I think I played it a little safe and stopped uh, hitting him directly early just in case, so not too bad. I was more nervous because of that Darkness Crystal's way readily available pretty, pretty quickly if you hit the right path. Well, and um, yeah, the first two parts of the, uh, <laughs> the loop, the... Mag uh, Cave Magnus and that Tower of Zot really not having much of value. Yeah, when I saw Fu up there, it's like, oh, please don't be somewhere else. But right on the hook. Yeah, after that, it definitely looked like you you pushed the pedal to the metal a little bit. Like, you saw that second Fu and you were like, oh no, have I just wasted, you know, all this time going through these checks? Uh, and, you know, with second place hot on your heels, I, I'm very curious. I'm interested in reading the, uh, the spoiler discussion for this uh, race afterwards to see if uh, if maybe another player did completely forego Zot and Magnus and uh, just had that close of a time through a thoroughly different route. Yeah, it's possible. Because um, the Fey March was essentially free, and then I could see if, since it didn't hit anything, you could run up tower since I had tower key just because he spent the time, and then who knows what that would have led to. No, it couldn't really have led to anything, actually. So yeah, just the tower time. Well, Poydrek is currently in the tower and found a spoon, and we're about to see what the tower key item is. Oh, nice. So someone did go up there. Yeah, we are learning about the other part of the seed, uh, just a glass mask, uh, which I... I... Yeah, <laughs> with the bosses you fought on the moon, that might help a tiny bit, but definitely not what you were you're hoping to see after you take the uh, the lower babble options there. Yeah, not at all. Glass hat is nice, but not with a bunch of heavy Cecil weapons and a Cecil right there at an objective. Yeah, poor Cecil never really getting anything to to swing with. Well, you got a you had a some sort of a sword. A bow and arrow. You got to swing like four times. <laughs> it is kind of nice to see scenes where Cecil has to take a back seat. Like we've had so many over the years where, you know, you get the x cow, you get the crystal sword, you get a light bringer on some of them and you just watch him tear everything apart. Uh, having him have to play second or third fiddle this seat was, uh, I don't know, subtly enjoyable. Yeah. It's still nice having him for a backup for just his cover strats in general, just having him sit there. And I wonder sometimes if maybe you should chuck it. If he got another curse train, chuck it on him just to get him out of the queue, but just to take the hits. Mm, good idea. I like it. Well, Gigi's again. You played that seed beautifully, start to finish. Very enjoyable to watch. You have any final thoughts on it before uh, we let you go? Nope, it was uh, pretty fun. A little hard start, but after 
got that that easy that heron rope it was smooth sailing well thank you so much for letting us restream you we really appreciate it thanks for having me right have a good night all you too thanks so Bye. much have a great night I think I could feel Poydrax disgust upon looking at the Kakul shop. Did you want to buy some crystal armors? <laughs> you can buy some crystal armor. You want some drain spears for that that edge you don't have? We have the best, one of the best darts, right? No, no, you don't. Uh, so I don't think he even picked up the, the Perseus gear for Rosa. No. He like, didn't even like, nope, I'm gone. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> the shop sucks. I hate it. But Poydrac about to get his darkness crystal. Yep, we'll also be in go mode with ample key items to spare. Uh, gonna be getting double XP from everything going forward. I wonder where the sand ruby and the the uh, package were. Well, oh, you know, I wasn't even paying attention to the uh, the scrawl, uh, the spoiler log scrawl. Uh, we do have uh, Dwarf Castle, Sealed Cave, and the top half of the moon all available that could have those. Oh, and of, okay, our tracker Ryudo has this covered. So, Sand Ruby behind Luca, Package behind Moon Boss. So, yeah, you weren't getting those. Yeah, Magma Key and Pass unaccounted for. Uh, Magma Key was from the Mura Altar. Oh, okay, okay. And of course, Pass doesn't show up in that spoiler log. Womp womp. Not a key item. At least not anymore. Poydrak raising the well. I'm going to get number four on and then a quick dash to the bottom of the moon, I'm sure. I wonder if he'll take any uh, trap chest fights en route just to keep fishing for a Cecil weapon. Yeah, um, or even just the levels. Um, some people love and swear by Fu and friends. Some people are like, no. But still, um, still a few more racers in this and no other finishers other than uh, Pyre and McBain. Yeah, it would very much not surprise me if McBain had used... Uh, well, here, I will take a peek at the Race Spoilers channel. And he mentioned Pyre posted his route, and so wondering where other folks went. Uh, maybe we'll get a post from McBain before Poydrak cleans up these bosses. Yes, he's typing. So I'm I'm fascinated by that. And since Poydrak is going to be doing stuff we've already seen for the most part, I don't mind relaying it to chat once we get the uh, the deets, the juicy deets here in Race Spoilers chat. And all of these racers, um, fantastic racers. Uh, Pyre been along, been been around for a long time. Uh, McBain, one of our wonderful French Canadian runners, uh, just a great runner. Of course, Poydrak, uh, Poydrak was one of the first people I met from the community. Amazing, amazing person, amazing runner, um, just all around, awesome. Um, I believe Judge Joe is in this race. Uh, Judge Joe, Judge Joe is in all of these races. Um, he's he's my one constant. Um, Judge Joe, fabulous runner, just can take and do so much with so little. Um, my old two v two partner, who has definitely outgrown my old fashioned tendencies in uh, free enterprise. So just all fantastic runners in this race. And I'm just so glad to get to see them do some high-level plays. Heck yeah. And then, of course, my co-coms here, um, the wonderful and venerable, a good friend of mine who taught me the game and helped bring me into the community. Shucks. <laughs> Aren't you glad I remembered how to spit out words again? <laughs> Allie, you are a darling and a sweetheart, and 
I am very thankful for all the good you do for this community and all the work and effort you put into it. And uh, uh, Free Enterprise definitely would not be what it is without you. Oh, thank you. We do have a third finisher. Judge Show is clocked in at 122.23. Also uh, typing up some wall of text in the Race Spoilers channel. So we should learn a little bit about how he handled the seed shortly. But Poydrak heading straight into the ribbon room, gonna come across these uh, D's Lunars uh, that are gonna go vroom. I don't know, did Poydrak pick up a bunch of Star Veils? I don't know, I'm looking at that item menu. We do know that Poydrak has a Moon Veil from the Flame Dog chest. Uh, Fu and, well, Fu at least will know the Reflect spell at this point, so we do have a source of it through him. Uh, Holding Rydia's turn, I think, implies that we're going to, let's see, scrolling seven Star Veils. There they are. Seven is plenty. Maybe not for Fu and friends strats at Zoromas, but definitely enough to get you through this fight. Oh yeah, we do still have to fight Zoromas. That's kind of important. see. Judge Joe also did Fu and Friends, uh, although had Rydia Behemoth throwing out a lot of work there, too, since, of course, the uh, casting Behemoth will get you a virus counter in Phase 1, so you can do big damage with Rydia, and if you have the Star Veils up anyway, there's some good bonus damage. Uh, but did lose a little bit of time doing those lower battle checks before going to return the pan, so that caught him a little bit. Uh, also had a heroin rope for the overworld. Roger McBain, also heroin rope. Uh, interesting, though. So McBain did do uh, a D machine grind at eight key items to set up and then went to the moon to finish things off. Uh, and did Zot and Baron, but did not do uh, Cave Magnus and did not do the Fame Arch fights. So, McBain uh, doing less checks than uh, Pyre, but had a uh, longer time to get set up for the Z fight due to not having 10 key items and or not wanting to do Foo and Friends. Well, and a D machine grind, very, very understandable when the game gives you Ether 2s and Star Veils and a Foo with weak at, like, the third level, um, and a darkness crystal, you might as well. So Poydrak does get the frog set up. This fight is no longer a threat. It's just, uh, the time to finish them off. It's times like this, you wish you had a really good Cecil stick, or some really good anti-dragon weapons. They still retain their dragon typing, even if they're in little froggy form. Does that mean that frogs are dragons? Yeah. <laughs> what if we put little dragon wings on them? Okay. But then they wouldn't bump their butts when they hopped. Well, I mean, they would still bump their butts, but their little dragon wings would flutter. Oh, okay. As long as they're not really flying, they're just fluttering the wings. Okay. It would be so cute, like when you put little hats on rats. But well, sorry, I got I got distracted thinking about rats and hats. What what's what's going on? What are we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I figured I figured that would send you off into a thought spiral. Um, we can shout out the rest of our restream team tonight. Um, we do have Ryudo on tracking, and we have Plumeria Knight on restreaming. Um, very important jobs. Very thankful that they stepped up to let us just sit here and talk. Oh yeah, and great job on uh, all accounts. The. Uh, uh... I, I hate tracking, first and foremost, so props to anyone who does that job and does it well. GG's Ryuda and uh, PK, again, you know, restreamers, uh, it, what do you do without them? Nothing. 
you just sit there and you pull up a multi twitch or a cadgar and you feel real sad because you're not getting you know the full show so thanks to both of y'all yeah i don't track because i am really bad at it don't have the attention span and um yeah no but if you are somebody who is thinking about hey i would really like to maybe give this whole commentary or tracking or restreaming thing and try uh, I encourage you to go ahead and join the Discord. Uh, just join the Restream team. It's a fabulous time. Um, we love newcomers. We love to help show people how to do new things. It might seem a little scary at first, especially something like Restreaming or Commentary, but we make sure that you are supported every step of the way. Um, and let me drop a Discord link in the chat. Is there not a command for it? Yeah, oh, but I had, to, I had to push the button. Oh, okay. Well, you said drop a link, so I assume you're like copy pasting. Uh, it, no, that would be too hard. Yeah. Heaven knows what I'd... You remember the last time I tried to put uh, commands in and I actually t accidentally tried to change your channel name instead of the Twitch channel name for here? Yeah. Yeah, I don't copy paste good. Gotcha. <laughs> Especially now because I have to use a Mac at work. And did you know that you have to push different buttons? Yeah, I I I had a job where I was provided a MacBook for a while, and I'm like, this is not actually the right piece of gear for the work y'all are doing. But I guess y'all want to look fancy for the investors. Fine. I do like the mouse, the the trackpad gestures though. That is one thing that I will praise them for, and I wish that I had that on all my other laptops throughout life as well. I, Are you familiar I, with this, like the three finger like gestures and everything that you can do? I had to turn those off after the second day because um, sometimes I would accidentally start tracking back and forth because um, I would get jittery. Um. Uh, okay. Less coffee, Allie. Less coffee too much coffee. Uh, look, if I don't have my 300 milligram energy drink before 10 o'clock, I get angry. Yeah, le less coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but Poidrak taking out this Dr. Lugay, uh, throwing angry dragon god, uh, Rydia definitely getting use out of that Bahamut summon. There we go. And of course, Rosa, XP no matter what, C hero function. So this will be Poidrax go mode. Let's see how he elects to prepare for Zeromas. Oh yeah, and as uh, Gretham saying in chat, uh, even if it's not just free enterprise, I will go ahead and speak up for, you know, there are tons of speed run marathons that happen with uh, channels adjacent to the community. Uh, Randothon is coming up, which I believe you have a run in that. Uh, the RPG Valkyries do a couple of speedrun marathons each year. Uh, there are some side marathons like Questing for Glory done on the RPG Limit Break channel. And I'm sure there are many, many others that people in the community are active with. And uh, Scala Kitty made such great guides for folks to get into the restream side of things here in the free enterprise community that you can use that as a springboard to then help with all kinds of other charity events as well uh so don't be scared of restreaming it's uh it's pretty cool pretty cozy and uh not so bad at all as the person who handles documentation and the randothon uh, marathon yeah i totally uh stole a lot of stuff from the guides that scala made and Demarine. I stole most of the commentary guidelines from Demarine. <laughs> and here we go. Poitrack also looking to just run this. Uh, uncertain about the Veil situation, unsure about the restorative situation. Uh, like, Pyre went shopping. Pyre was shopping. Uh, so let's see if Poitrack has the supplies to make this work as smoothly.
but did save after that Lugay fight, so at least um, isn't going to lose time there if things do go sideways. And does still have some grinds available. I mean, there's always doors. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you really want to go down to Sealed Cave and back up here when you don't have the pass. <laughs> no, no, no. I think somebody did the timed it once and it was like two minutes and 36 seconds. And that's if you have every input correct. Mm. Frame perfect movement. I mean, for what it's worth, you know, joke about that. But Final Fantasy IV, the SNES version is actually really forgiving on that front because of how it reads diagonal inputs and because you can't change your direction midway through a tile. So it's actually not that hard to have a perfectly, uh, a perfect walk in this game, if you are attentive and focused while doing it. There's even a point where you can uh, walk the moon backwards. Um, I've had to do that more than once. <laughs> and you get real good at it. The moment you're like, wait, I don't have an exit spell? What am I doing with my life? But here we go, crystal getting thrown. Yeah, let's see what, uh, what Poidrak thinks of this aroma sprite. Oh, the existential dread is back. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I hate it so much. <laughs> uh, I don't like looking at it. Would it be better if it had a little hat? <sighs> No, 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 no. Maybe? Maybe. Yeah, just like one of those little, like, hats, uh, the, the old lady church hats, the uh, straw hats. Maybe at a little tilt? I think PK has the, uh, or pardon me, Flunaria Knight. We got, what, why does our Twitch chat get two PKs? Uh, I think that's the better, it would be better without the big hole in the middle, yes. Uh, but yeah, we see some different strats here. We did see some Zerking going off. Do you have a supply of Cure Threes being put to work here? coming out from that Rosa. Yeah, because this Rosa is just at her base agility, right? Uh, because even that Crystal Ring would not have put her to 28. So, kind of, yeah. Mm. Scary. Big Bang, Iridia below 1200 HP, but probably has good gear on. Yeah. She's fine. She's surviving. Yeah, Iridia is doing good work. Um, probably not going to survive a full powered Big Bang, though. Bouncing some ice threes off, you know, getting good damage out of them, you know. If you, if we have the supplies here, the uh, the restorative items, to not have to do the second phase of the fight, this is fine. It's fine to do that amount of damage. The nukes and the ice threes will eventually bring us home. Uh, the big question is, of course, surviving. Like, this damage is fine, but we need... Uh, do we have enough gas in the tank to get us to that 61,000 mark? The rare Ice 3 coming out from Rydia. Uh, 
I'm sad that the Fire 3 animation is longer and slower than Ice 3 and Lightning 3, because I love the design of Fire 3 in this particular Final Fantasy. But if you're trying to go fast, that's not the one you should be casting. I just fight uh, Rubicant. He'll cast it all the time on you. You might uh, die, but... But no, the, the spell animations, so many of the spell animations in this game are fantastic. Yeah, and actually, with the recent patch of the Pixel Remasters, like, Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remaster at release did not have most of the unique Final Fantasy IV spell animations, and I was furious about it. Uh, but the recent patch that added all the console, like, boosters and stuff did, uh, it fixed that. So it is back in business. We, we have our good spell animations again. Thank you, Squeenix, for getting with the program a year and a half, two years after the fact. And breaking the randomizer. Hey, you know, man, Game Boy fixed it. <laughs> it's working again. It's still good. There was some panic in the randothon uh, because that was one of our submissions. But Infinius is going to be okay. Yeah. Three Star Vales left. Burning one there to make sure someone important lives. Is casting Zerk here, which again, I'd be nervous about. Uh, I do not, I would not want to do the second phase of this fight if at all possible. But Poydrak may just be committed to it. We do have two Ether Ones and an Elixir kicking around. Seven more Cure Threes, two Ether Twos. So I think we have the curatives as long as we don't suffer any uh, big missteps in the remainder of the fight. And I didn't see, did Poydrak turn down his battle speed? I know that Pyre did. Oh yeah, Pyre went in at battle speed four. I, I honestly don't remember whether or not uh, Poydrak did. These nukes are still doing work. I'm gonna pay attention to the next few attacks that Zeromas does. I think we've tipped into phase two and that's why we've not seen anything in a hot minute. Just because the, uh, the HP reset and follow-ups give you a nice little pause. Yeah, this... I hope Poydrak has enough curatives to get through this. Because, uh... Cecil... Cecil not the dream today. Yeah. All that hope looking for uh, a good Cecil weapon, and I think this is still Runak's life? Yep. He knows it's okay to break 1k, right? Honestly, he may have a better chance doing that with the Artemis arrows and the Elven bow. <laughs> All right, we do see a crystal thrown here in an attempt to time a nerf. If it is nerfed, that is exactly who you want to get nuked because Yang still has the 1200 left over here. I have never actually been able to time a second or third nerf, other than one time when I just couched to winged it. Yeah. It's admittedly much easier when you have cursed rings or a damned character and everyone's at, you know, RA1. This Big Bang will tell us if the timing was right. Fingers crossed, clear eyes. That was not nerfed. We do still have two survivors though, so can definitely bring this back. The black hole buys us a little bit of time. And I guess if you're gonna have two people live, uh, one of them being Fu is probably best case scenario. Yeah, yeah. 
Yang being picked up as well. The nuke hits Cecil that will down him. Kind of a low roll nuke too, but just back to back with a big bang, very rough. Looking to max out Yang's HP here with that one elixir. Should still have some cure threes uh, if Poydrek wants to refresh Foos. Looks like gonna go straight damage. Yeah, the Bacchus Wine as the, uh, it doesn't do amazing damage, but it does give us a turn buffering. You know, just having those attacks automatically enter the queue and execute means that you're not uh, accidentally losing ticks to trying to get into your menus quite so often. Looks like we're trying to pick everybody up with that Cure 4. We'll see if it comes out before the Big Bang. It does. That's excellent. That's excellent. Looks to be holding Fu's turn here. Oh, is going to Aether 2. Yeah, Fu being out of MP makes that a little rough. So I like going ahead and burning the Aether 2. Especially since Rosic goes down, uh, let's hope we can get back around to Fu's turn to uh, maybe use one of those Cure Threes. May see a Cure Four on the uh, yeah Cure Four split between the two of them here. Fu, we need we would like a high roll from you, buddy. Okay, split two ways. That's pretty decent. With this coming out, we are 100% in phase two of the fight. Pudrak again, just holding the turn here, hoping that Fu survives the unnerfed Big Bang to then heal up the team with a Cure 4. And, whoo, flying by the seat of his pants. <laughs> this certainly is a power couple. Um, <laughs> we have one man with too much hair and one man with... Not nearly as much. <laughs> Pancras, thank you for the 43 months renewing that free Enterprise sub. And I did not even know that Dino Dance had been changed. I love Dino Dance. What did they do to Dino Dance? Oh, this could be, this could be bad. So I have a handful of Cure Threes here. That'll get Fu top back up. Again, the big concern, of course, is the Big Bangs will go up. They rotate. There are two that come out with a maximum of 2,400 damage, and the third one, 2,700. I think it actually goes 24, 27, 24, 24, 27, 24. I forget. The script's on the wiki. Uh, my usual plan is just have it dead before you have to see those numbers. Uh, so when the 2700 one comes out, we really need to see a lucky roll from Fu. Or, you know, we could just be at rocks. I think that Poydrak is gonna be okay. Yep, um, as long as Fu can dodge another batch of rocks, we can get some cures off, and then uh, Yang is just very slowly going to beat this hand to death. Just YOLO and nuke! YOLO and nuke, Poydrak. Surely nothing will go wrong if you YOLO and nuke at this point. What if we YOLO'd and Meteo'd? <laughs> cure for, cure for, cure for, cure for, cure for, cure for. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, so not the dodgiest when it comes to rocks, not like. Rosa, or Porum, or Rydia. Or okay, he could does dodge, dodge that roll. That's great. That's great. Very safe here. You can even hold the turn if you want to. Oh, doing a Cure 3 to top up. But the final phase is the last 12,000 HP. Yang is type, is punching for about 2,000 a pop. Can't be much longer. Well, not 2,000 on that hit, but it was the final hit anyway. 
It was enough, and now we never have to see this abomination again. You say that, you're gonna roll it for like the next four Z sprites, <laughs> and we're all gonna cry. <sighs> but uh, yeah, GG's out in chat for Poydrag, coming in with a 147.10. Bad luck on the trap chest fishing, but uh, pulling that Z fight off so nicely, I was so nervous. And we're joined by Poydrag, GG's Poydrag. Whatever you're saying, I resemble that remark. <laughs> uh, so when you did get your darkness crystal and you're in go mode, you're headed to the moon, and you've not seen a single gosh darn Cecil weapon of note, what were you thinking about? Like, how are you planning to attack the Z fight at that point? Like, what was going through your head? Um, pretty much as as what you saw there. Um, go in and hope and see if if it came out out and stuck. That's it. <laughs> I knew I was going in really low for what I normally do. I just thought, you know what? I spent so much time. I really don't care what happens. If if I win, I win. If I don't, uh, oh well. Well, you lived a little and you gamed a little. I, I was very nervous because, again, our other restreamed runner, uh, Pyre, went to that fight but had spent so much cash on Ether 2s and Cure 3s that you know there was no worry about and and star veils so there was no worry about running out of any of those three main resources and so doing like the the shoestring budget version of that and pulling it off was extremely impressive to watch very well done yeah i i enjoy it i i that it, it's been a very long time since i've actually raced i i checked and it was like i my last race was October last year um, and I haven't really done too much in the interim because of commitments but uh, so yeah I, I just thought I've got a bit of time I'm I'm awake I might as well jump in and uh, yeah but it, um, I'm I'm glad I got uh, I got back back into it yeah, I'm getting back into it a bit it, I've been doing you know, people uh, may know that I deal with the seed of the week and I've been running a few of them more recently and getting the, getting the race under my hat is really really helpful for me it means I'm actually getting back to some semblance of fun I suppose <laughs> I hear you I hear you well and we are definitely glad to see you back um, as I was saying earlier you were one of the first um, I think you were a restream lead when I first met you. Um, you helped me with my first ever race. Yeah, no. back back in like 2019. <laughs> yeah, I'm an old hat, not quite as old as the other person on the commentary to you, but uh, yes, um, uh, old hats, and yeah, I'm, I'm just glad I can com uh, contribute as much as I have. have the community and hopefully i'll be able to continue doing that in the future well that would be amazing <laughs> as for now it's probably time i went to bed but you, <laughs> you know i'm being i'm being halfway around the world to everyone else well, what's well, it I... like 4 a.m there for you uh just coming up to 3 a.m oh that's but... Nothing, but I'm, yes, go I'm, get some sleep. I'm awake. Uh, I, I was awake. I raced. <laughs> good, good words to live by. Well, hey, GG's again. Wonderful Zeromas fight. Get some rest. And uh, thanks again for being on the restream. Appreciate you. Yeah, have a good day, everyone. Allie, where are we going? We are going to go get some more free Enterprise. We are going to Commander Leonhart. Um, who is playing Lord Goober's Seed from the Race Against Gurren. Um, Commander Leonhart, uh, another one of our community members, runs the 99 Percenters Club. Um, go give some love. Say, hey, this was a great race. You should check it out when you've got some time. But I have been Alice L. Um, of course, our tracker, Ryudo, our restreamer, Plumeria Knight, and to Invenerable, thank you so much for coming out and joining me. It has been a pleasure. Good night, everyone.